Hi, it's Philo. Finally, I'm here to give you a little update about the books I read this summer and we're going to make a few spreads for them in my reading journal. As always, I link all the supplies I used down below in the description, but the vast majority came from the journal say unboxing I posted last week. And a few washi tapes are from the washi tape shop and I'm an affiliate with both, so you can use my codes for a discount. This summer I read 5 books from 5 countries and first I came back to a few authors I enjoyed reading last year and one of them was Gaston Leroux, a French writer. Last year I read and loved his Phantom of the Opera so I really wanted to read The Mystery of the Yellow Room, another classic mystery written in 1907. And we dive into the action right from the beginning, learning about a mysterious attempt on a woman's life in a very isolated house, and what's more, in a locked room where she was alone. There's the official detective from the police, but also our main protagonist, the famous reporter Rouletabille, and they're having an interesting competition over this investigation, but in true Larousse fashion, he also involves the reader in the resolution of this seemingly impossible crime, so we get to be a part of this competition too. Once again, I really love this style of Leroux, and particularly his talent to make us doubt ourselves and doubt our senses, he also forces us to think and observe and analyze. He plays with the reader. I also liked his subtle humor and the challenge he sets to us. Unfortunately, I found Rultabi too self-important and pretentious. And I also guessed a big part of the mystery. This investigation is the first in a series of eight installments featuring Rultabi, the famous reporter. The second one is The Perfume of the Lady in Black. I don't know if you've read it, tell me if it's worth it, because at the moment I'm unsure as to whether I should keep reading this series. I think it's very well written and it's entertaining, but I don't really like Rultabi and I don't know if he gets better and more enduring in the next installment. Anyway, it's always fun to look for specific elements of a book in my stationery collection. It's kind of a treasure hunt every month. Here with a few washi tapes and stickers, I was able to recreate the atmosphere of the yellow room as I imagine it. In the end, I gave this book 3 stars, which is good, but it doesn't make it on the list of the books I would like to reread someday. And I'm writing my thoughts with my brand new wooden fountain pen, kindly gifted to me by Ellington Pens. It's the Maple Harmony with an extra fine nib. And I have to say, it's so nice and so smooth. It makes the whole journaling experience even better. And it feels like whatever I write is important and I should probably sign at the bottom of the page, you know. Next, I picked up Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. It's no secret that Daphne du Maurier is one of my favorite writers, and I've set myself the goal of reading all of her fiction books. So far, I've read four, including this one, Rebecca, My Cousin Rachel, and Jamie Gain. Daphne du Maurier is known for being the queen of gothic, but here, this story is set in summer against the beautiful backdrop of Cornwalls and she paints the portrait of Donna, a woman about to turn 30, married with two children, in full existential crisis, who escapes to the countryside craving some peace and quiet and freedom. And things happen, maybe there's a creek and maybe there's a heartless Frenchman on the loose. 
Not only is this story beautiful and full of suspense, but in this one she blends action, humor and psychological depth masterfully. As per usual in her novels, her female characters are strong, vulnerable, mysterious and grey. Through them, she raises a reflection about the situation of women in her time, but here I found Donna especially modern, realistic and understandable. Once again, her story and all of her characters are unforgettable and she'll leave you thinking for a while. Something I love about her style is also that she has a very specific way to start her stories, sort of by the end but not quite, so you know what's at stake but you can't fully grasp it yet or guess anything, so it hooks you from the start and from there she builds a strong suspense. Here I played with papers and stickers to recreate the landscape and the atmosphere, but also with a stencil that has a really nice font, very fitting for this story. So it's an easy 5 stars. As always, her books deserve a reread, even when the mystery is unraveled. But for now, her next books on my list are The Scapegoat and The House on the Strand. After that, I read The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri from the US and India. Last year, I read Interpreter of Maladies by the same author and I really, really liked it. It's a short stories collection, so this time I wanted to dive more into her works with a full-length novel. In this one, we follow a young Indian couple moving to the US and especially the life of their son from his birth to adulthood. Named after the Russian writer, Gogol Ganguly is torn between his Indian upbringing and his American life. So we get to see what's in the name through this immigrant experience going through two generations. So it's pretty chill and slow, it's very character driven mostly about him and we see his life, the people he meets, his struggles to define himself. And there's a very nice reflection about identity and belonging and the existential struggle to call a place home. Again, I loved her writing and to me it felt special because I lived a very different immigrant experience. I'm French and I live in Spain, the country next door. But somehow a lot of Google's feelings felt very relatable. So that made it a very personal experience where at some specific points it seemed like I read exactly what's in my mind.
Then I read two books by authors I had never read before. First, All Systems Read by Martha Wells from the US. It's the first novella in the Murder Bot series. So this is a very short book, around 150 pages, and it got a few awards for Best Sci-Fi in 2017. Here we're in a corporate-dominated future, where a self-aware security android is working for humans and augmented humans, who explore planets for resources. He's not a huge fan of social interactions, and he would rather like to be left alone and watch series. And there's also a kind of thriller going on. Things start going mysteriously awry. This was supposed to be a buddy read with my husband, but to me the writing felt very dry, with a dash of sarcasm, but pretty repetitive. There are many characters that aren't well fleshed out, so they're hard to tell apart, and they're not really endearing. It also reads kind of technical, but not practical, if that makes sense. That bothered me. So it's not hard to read, but it's so dry and technical, it requires concentration. But at the same time, it's supposed to be a light read. I was also expecting more ethical or thought-provoking stuff, and it didn't deliver. Last, I read The Restlessness of Shanti Andia by Pio Baroja from Spain. It was written in 1911 and it's an autobiography of Shanti Andia, a fictional sailor from the Basque country at the end of his life, who tells us how he grew up between anecdotes and superstitions and how he became part of them. He tells us about his life, his loves and his adventures at sea and on land with humor and nostalgia, remembering old times and there's even some mystery and psychological depth and zero drama. So it's a realistic and melancholic portrait of his time through the epic story of Shanti's not-so-heroic deeds where half of it happens in spite of him but he's glad to improvise. It's very chill and laid back, especially the first half of the book, and then it gets way more adventurous, but it still feels peaceful somehow. It's very refreshing. There are some good reflections on the passage of time, growing into an adult, traveling, social class, and mostly belonging. His descriptions of landscapes are beautiful, and his portraying of people are frankly comical. This one can be read as a standalone, but it's the first in the series called Sea. It's easy to read and entertaining, and I think anybody would like it. It reminds me of the posthumous memoirs of Blas Cubas, though you get to like Shanti way more than Blas, and it's also clearly influenced by Stevenson. So it was a very nice surprise to me and to my husband, and we'll definitely need to dive more into Pio Baroja's books. Time to flip through these reading journal spreads. Here is everything I read this summer. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
tell me your thoughts and recommendations in the comments and leave me this emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you soon in the next one and until then, enjoy reading!